Hi, my name is Walden Swanson and I work for CDS Consulting Co-op and also for Co-op Metrics and I do data warehousing and business intelligence for several different cooperative sectors including natural food stores. And I want to go over today some observations from that data, some theories derived from those observations and then the implications we have for uh, co-op development and um, just how our co-ops perform. The uh, one little bit on the theories is that I feel like there's a co-op warming cycle that we're in now and that co-op climate changes is, is really in a good shape right now. Some of the observations I have are co-op waves, couches, and occupy Cancun. Now the co-op waves is a sketch and as you can see on this screen, this is data over the last um, dec uh, 10 decades, back to the 1920s. This data in the middle here are the co-ops that started in the 70s, and um, that's pretty good data. The number of co-ops that started and then fell off over time, and there are about 300 co-ops that started in the 70s that are still going now. But a, a lot more than that started back in the 70s and 60s. In fact, in Austin, where I was when I joined my first co-op, there were five co-ops at the time, and now just Wheatsville remains. But the volume of the co-ops has steadily increasing, has increased since that time and is steadily increasing now. So it's over, um, it's almost one and a half billion dollars from those co-ops that started back in the 70s. Quite significant. The data in the pink over here are the co-ops that started in the Depression. And as you can see, there was a, a peak in co-ops that started and then a fall off in the number of co-ops over time. But again, the volume kept going up. And today, there are only a handful of those co-ops that are still alive. One of those is Hanover, a member of NCGA and doing $70 million a year and doing quite well, thank you. But most of the others that started during that era have closed. Uh, Hyde Park, as you're probably aware, closed a couple of years ago and it was one of the surviving old wave co-ops uh, in Chicago. And then, uh, and this data is a little sketchy and uh, it needs to be filled out. So it's my first run at how many co-ops started in their volume, but we need to do more work to verify that. The green, as I said before, is pretty accurate data, and the blue over here are the third wave of co-ops I, I see, and um, that's just speculation. As you can see, it's into the future. But as you can see from this data and from this sketch, there are these waves of co-op development, number of co-ops, and then the volume. And to me, that's very important. Right now, there are about 350 groups that are forming food co-ops somewhere in the country. And right here in Andover, where I live, we've been sitting on the couch once a month for the last 13 months and just incorporated our own food co-op last Sunday. But of those 350 dots on that map, most of those will not make it. It'll be the same phenomena that we saw with those co-ops in the 30s and those co-ops in the 70s. A lot will form, few will survive. But a decade ago, there were probably only 10 dots on that map. And now they're 350. So why? What happened in the 80s and 90s? So there are only a few co-ops forming. And now when you have all of this energy and local effort, form new co-ops, mainly by people sitting on couches. Well, one other observation that kind of fits into this pattern happened in Cancun. Now you're going to have to excuse this next slide because you're not going to be able to read it. But when I show it, I hope that you can see the trend line that's implied. Uh, this was taken from my droid way back in an audience looking at different 
co-op managers presenting information about the rise and fall of their co-ops in countries from around the world. I was sitting with Steve Wolf, the CFO of NCGA, when we were listening to these presentations. This is one from uh, the co-op in, in um, Finland, the S Group. Now, I know you can't read it. It's fuzzy, but you, I hope you can make out that red line right there. And that's the rise and the fall of the co-ops in Finland over the last hundred years. And as you can see, it's very similar to those graphs that we looked at earlier. What was so interesting to Steve and I was that after the Finnish presentation, someone from the United Kingdom got up and they presented their history and it had a similar type of graph. And then several other countries made presentations, and we saw similar, not exact uh, graphs, but similar ones. Not all of them had the same kind of cycles, but many of them did. And that's where Steve and I went, aha. Because none of the presenters realized that the other presenters were presenting the same kind of cycles. They were all attributing these ups and downs to poor management, increased competition, you know, those kind of factors instead of some kind of common cause that might be affecting us all. So it really was an interesting situation. Several people, including myself, have started reading this guy, Hirschman. He's a, a emeritus economist from Princeton. And my favorite of his books is Shifting Involvements. And it tracks the rise and fall of private interest in public action. He doesn't mention co-ops at all. That's not his whole stick. But, but it applies to the graphs that we were looking at, the charts that we were looking at uh, earlier. And what Hirschman basically says is that we have periods where where greed is good, you know, like the garden gecko uh, in that movie, you know, and just where everybody wants to work on Wall Street and for a hedge fund and make lots of money and and to hell with bureaucracy and regulations and, you know, it's just, just uh, naked capitalism is the best way to go and what's going to provide the most contentment for the most people and for myself. And then that, that kind of after a decade gets old. And people kind of don't like it so much. And that you bail out the bankers and you occupy Wall Street. And there's this public action that kind of prevails or, or starts imbuing the population. And the, the meme, the cultural meme is more like Kennedy's quote. is like, you know, not ask not what your country can do do for you, ask what you can do for your country, and, and people start banding together and, and having public action. And that's what Hirschman documented over many, many decades, the rise and the fall of this orientation towards me or we. And so we have uh, christened that for ourselves in terms of co-ops, the we-me cycle as a way, as a theoretical way to explain those charts that we were looking at earlier. And these charts, you know, with these waves, they might not, might, they might not hold up once we gather more data. It does seem to uh, be true from the data that we have gathered, but we haven't been thorough enough. I want to emphasize that. The implications of these uh, cycles affects us three different ways I see. Strategy, you know, where we are in this cycle um, would determine kind of how we brand, as we'll see down here, or, you know, how we develop, how fast we develop. If we're in the we part of the cycle, and and um, I think we are now, this, this co-ops are cool, the, the co-op warming part of the cycle, then I think what we do is, is we lead co with our chin. Co-ops, we, we're proud to be in co-ops. It's, it's how to get people involved and, and, and we want to lead, lead that way. And we ought to take advantage of that to start as many new co-ops that will last as we can. If we're on the down part of the cycle or when we move into that, our strategy should change. Our branding should change. Our development should change. We almost need to become a hedgehog 
the number of people interested in the we part of our cycle is going to go down. They'll always be the core. In every country and in every sector, there are co-ops. You can't kill them. They're part of human nature. But the number of people interested is going to go down during that down cycle, indeed, if there are cycles. And our our marketing is different and our development is different and we just need to survive until a new cycle swings up. So it's very important for boards of directors and managers, in my opinion, to, to figure out where we are in that cycle, how much longer we have in that cycle, and then how we should strategize to optimize co-op development in this country and around the world. To me... Assuming that these cycles are going on and that we're in a co-op warming cycle, opportunity is knocking. And shame on us if we don't take advantage of that. And just my conclusion is, if we are in an up cycle, there is a co-op warming, and co-ops are cool right now, then let's just be awesome about our development and work together to create as many new vibrant co-ops that sustain the down cycle when it eventually comes. Thank you.